Ladies and gentlemen, direct from the College Hill, Sheets is, it's good brew. Arnold Palmer, half lemonade and half iced tea, in the all new bottle. Absolutely love it, it's incredible. And remember, they've got a Sheets convenience store in Calcutta, right here in Ohio. All right, here he is, from Seminole, the longtime director. Oakmont, of course, country club, golf, the golf pro there, he is Bob Ford. It is time to talk the Open Championship at Royal Birkdale. And when you think about Royal Birkdale, you go back to 08, Robert, and it was the tournament in which Greg Norman, then 58, made a run. And then I go to Turnberry, and I think of, well, 59-year-old Tommy Watson in a playoff. And I think of, well, Darren Klein, Ernie Els, Phil Mickelson, all over 40 that have won it. Lee Westwood, now 44 years of age, he's got, what, three top 10 finishes in majors, but he's never won one. I'd sure like to see it. And then, because of the, the British connection, you have to think of Justin Rose at this same golf course back in 1998 as a 17-year-old amateur. He ends up chipping in for birdie on the last hole and finishing tied for fourth. So a lot of drama, a lot of history at the Open, but especially at Royal Birkdale. And I know you are as excited as the rest of us. Some early thoughts as we are just days away. Well, Rob, I am excited about the Open. You know, it's great to watch. It's really, uh, you know, at least my second favorite of all the majors. But uh, one of the favorites to watch because you wake up in the morning and it's on. So I'm excited for it to begin. I want to tell you, Royal Birkdale is one of the premier courses in there, Rota. Uh, might be one of the best links courses that they play. Uh, although it's in England, it's not, you know, one of the Scottish courses. But I gotta tell you, I'm not going with the old guy, buddy. I'm cutting his age in half. I'm going with 22 year old John Rahm. He's hot. He won the uh, Scottish Open or the Irish Open, one of those two, a couple of weeks ago. And he is the real deal. He's gone from 270th in the world to 7th in the world in, in uh, a few fast months here. So, uh, but, you know, the other other key event that I would pick is Jason Day. I always put money on Jason Day, and, I, you know, he's just going to win one of these days. But John Rahm, he's, he's the deal. He's the real deal. All right, listen, our favorite, Arnold Palmer, has won this amazing event, the Open Championship, Lee Trevino, uh, Johnny Miller, uh, along with Tom Watson, uh, so many people that we have watched through the years. Of course, the Golden Bear, Jack Nicholas, Peter Thompson has won twice at Royal Birkdale, been playing that tournament, the Open Championship, at that location since 1954, and they're back this year again. Um, you, you look at this par 70 course, it has been around since 1899. Your thoughts about Royal Birkdale, and where does it stack up amongst the great Lynx golf courses that host the Open Championship, Bob Ford? Well, I think it's one of the best, really. I really do. You know, of the nine champions that they have, eight of them are in the Hall of Fame, which is pretty extraordinary. And so, you know, they get you proven winners. Uh, and, uh, you know, the score is right around even par. And I think Padre Harrington was even plus three in what he won. And, uh, and he, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. He won three majors, so it's only a matter of time. So it's a, it's a Hall of Fame golf course in my book. It's one of the, one of the all-time best. So it out really great. I'm going to just rattle off a couple of names. Bob Ford from Seminole, of course. He is our go-to guy whenever we're fortunate enough to get him on the line. He's joined us on KDK Radio for many years during his time as Director of Golf and Golf Pro at Oakmont, and we're really happy to have him tonight on the Comcast Sports Line here at Cassidy Emanuel in East Liverpool. Hey, Arnold Palmer has done a lot of things for golf and will always be remembered for just about anything that is golf, but this championship, the reason it became the championship that it is today, it really is because Arnold always took time to play this tournament when many fellow members of the PGA just never thought it was worth going across the Atlantic. Well, he, he did, Rob, and he won a Royal Birkdale and turned the whole championship around, really. I mean, they give Arnold's credit with everything, including the IT you're drinking, but uh, he, is, he is amazing. And, you know, it just wasn't uh, financially rewarding to come over and spend all the money that they had to on expenses, and they weren't playing for very much money back in those, that era. But uh, as you can see, uh, everybody would like to hold that Claret jug, and I'm sure a lot of the guys wish they had played a lot more times over there. All right, Rory McIlroy, and then we'll go down a couple of more, then we'll let you go. Your thoughts about Rory McIlroy, who's been struggling of late, but I mean, this guy has won this event, and if anybody has, well, the, the ability to turn his game around and quickly, it's Rory McIlroy. Well, I think he's 
Well, he, he's one of my favorites. Okay, he can could, he could explode at any time. He's missed the last two cuts in a row. I don't think he's going to miss the third cut in a row or he's going to cut his hands off. But he's a great kid. He's a great talent. He, he could win by five this week, no question. Well, I think uh, the Spaniard uh, just doesn't get rolling that putter. You know, he's 176 in putting stats for the year. I, I know he obviously won Masters, but... Just quite good enough. He'll be in the top 10, though, no question. Sergio Garcia has already won $3 million this year, and of course the Masters Championship. He always plays well in this event, so if there were an opportunity out there for someone to, well, come off of the momentum of a Grand Slam title earlier in the year and to get the second of the four, this will be a good opportunity for Sergio. Well, he can do it. There's no question. I mean, he's one of the best ball strikers out there. This is a ball striker's golf course, so I wouldn't rule him out. All right. Up next, we've got Jordan Spieth, the young man with a whole lot of talent from Texas. Seems to get a little frustrated at times, but uh, hopefully he's maturing and he'll find a way to get his putter turned around. Not had a bad year at all, but uh, it would be nice to see him have a strong four rounds at Royal Birkdale. Well, it's different, you know, people talk about the greens and Royal Birkdale being a little on the slow side and a little on the flat side, so it kind of takes away the, you know, the imagination that some of these putters have and uh, kind of takes away the great putters, um, you know, their, their benefit of being great putters. So I'm not so sure that's a great golf course for him, but, he, you know, he's a champion and, uh, you know, you can't rule him out either. All right, now you're the brains of the outfit. Tell everybody that is a friend of mine who's watching this and has been telling me why him, 25 years of age, solid game, been very consistent. I keep thinking Hideki Matsuyama. Should I be thinking that, or do you think there's not a chance? No, I, I think he's a great player. You know, I think he uh, played a great round at the Open. He always plays good at Augusta. He, he's going to break through. He will be the first Japanese player ever to win a major. No question. All right, now, here he is, Phil Mickelson. You can never count this 46-year-old wonder out, but especially, for some reason, his game very conducive to the Open Championship. Well, he is. I mean, he, you know, he gave us uh, the greatest thrill last year. I mean, that was the greatest British Open since Nicholas had won back in 77 at Turnberg. But, uh, I don't know, I can't, I can't. I wouldn't put him in my pool of 10, that's for sure. All right, Ricky Fowler, when will it happen, and could it happen this weekend? Well, I think for sure, yeah. I think Ricky's playing good. Uh, Ricky Fowler, Justin Thomas, the young kids. Uh, it's only a matter of time when they break through. Tommy Fleetwood. Well, he's missed the last two cuts in the British Open, and he's been a hometown favorite. Going to be a lot of pressure on him. I, I, I don't know. He plays great. He plays good. He plays the U.S. Open. Uh, I don't know. I, I got a question mark there. All right, two more, real quick. Justin Rose, who we talked about, and also Matt Kuchar, who seems to be the sleeper as far as the pick for the Open Championship. Those two guys. Go ahead. Well, you know, back to Kuch. Kuch kind of reminds me of Stuart Zink a little bit. Zink. I think you know. I, I don't think he. He doesn't win a lot. He's only in the top five or the top ten. And somebody's going to have to lose it and kind of let, let Cooch back into it, I think. And Justin Rose, Justin Rose is a champion. He's first class, first class in every way. He's got good vibes there. You know, first deal, and I, I put him eye on my list. In closing, this is a, 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 a championship that you have to be able to really bomb the golf ball. We saw a lot of them at the U.S. Open at Erwin Hills, which has that Lynx flavor to it. Brooks Kepka, the 27-year-old bomber, is one of those uh, that will be there. So do you agree that, like the days when Tiger was dominating, and even if he would get down after the first two rounds, his ability to get back into the tournament was there because he always could hit the golf ball and hit it a long way? Is that still hold true for the Open Championship, Bob Ford? I'm not so sure of Royal Birkdale, uh, Rob, and you saw Nicholson decide to take his driver out of the bag, so I don't think length, you know, length is always a good thing to have, but I'm not so sure that it's a bomber golf course. You know, those bad gum bunkers come just in a fair way, and you go in one of those bunkers, you got to chip out. I don't care the car, so I don't think length is the most important factor. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Bob Ford, always a joy, always an honor, sir. Have a great rest of your night. Thanks, pal. See you, Rob. Good night from Casa de Emanuel.